Welcome back to the final squeeze of a splash of paint, where it's time for us to rejoin versatile acrylic artist Terry Chip as he adds the final finishing touches to today's captivating beach scene. Enjoy. Well, now we're going to try and get this painting moved on. We've got the uh, background in place. The sense of depth has been created. Now we start filling in a few of the details. I'm going to start in the background, getting these cliffs in place. Very simply, I don't want to draw attention to them. I just want them to be there. So I'm using a broad size 16 filbert for this and quite neutral colours. Okay, wet the brush so the paint doesn't stick to it. And then we'll start with, again, plenty of white because this is in the distance. We're looking through a haze. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the cobalt blue to add into that white. Give it a little bit of warmth there. And then neutralise that with just a touch of the burnt sienna. And that gives me a warm grey for the background. It perhaps needs to be a little bit deeper, so I'll put a little bit more of the... I'll put some yellow oak in as well. Give a slightly different tone to the sky. So, very simply, following this high cliff line here, I'm just going to block that in. The cliffs, this is the high um, walls above Scarborough. It's just very gently undulating. I'm doing it almost sky coloured because we're looking through an awful lot of sky air, if you like, whichever, to see to this. So that's the distant ridge. Then I want a little bit more colour, so I'm going to go for a little bit more blue, keeping it light still, and yellow ochre again. These are very clay cliffs around this area, so I'm keeping it quite warm. A touch of water just to help it flow. And then this is a little bit stronger. Doing it in very flat brush strokes. Because I don't want this to really intrude much into the picture. And then just follow this outline round here. Right, so that's that layer done. If we then add some more richer brown this time. For this nearer cliff, again, just picking it up. And blocking that in. That may be a little bit too dark. We'll see when we balance the whole picture. We can always go over it again and tidy that up if we need to. And just to give a hint of a beach at the bottom of that cliff, yellow ochre and white will run some of that along there. I don't want it quite that obvious, so I'll smudge it in, blur it away. Hint of it in the distance there as well. Okay. I've got that on the brush. It looks be useful for a few more distant patches of beach as well. I like to keep a colour running through the whole picture whenever I can. Right. Next step. Before I get into this worrying about the figures, which you can see the figures when I drew them into the gesso, that you can still see them there, even though I'm smearing this paint all across. I'm not going to lose those in a hurry. But what I want to do now, now that I've got this established, is to get the sparkle on the water. Now, to do that, 
I go back to using the uh, kitchen roll again. Slightly damp it. And now I'm going to pick up a lot of white. Maybe a hint of the other colours as well, just a hint of blue, but mainly white on this. And I'm thinking the light is going to come down here. I'm, I really want a dazzle of light coming down here. So I'm going to just sort of catch some white down there. This is very strong. Just blend it in. And tidy it up later if I need to, but I just want to establish this clear band of light coming down. This is the dazzle that reflects off the water and gives the whole picture its meaning. As I come further down, I'm getting plenty of paint onto the tissue. And I'm just catching the top edges of this. So I want to it's a dazzle, like the sparkles of water, sparkles of sunlight on the water there. As we come away from that, I can smooth it out a little bit. A bit more over that side, perhaps. Yeah, so that's got quite a dazzle on it. It's almost too bright but I am going to come back into it now with some sand. Let's give these people something to walk on, something to walk towards. then I can put in odd little bits that I want to improve. Now, there's a bit lumpy there, I want to smooth that out, so I will use a brush for this point. Using the blue, the cerulean blue this time, lots of white again. I just want to smooth that out. So, some long horizontal strokes in amongst the white stripes. Keeping that light in there. I don't want to tidy it up too much, otherwise I'll lose the sparkle. Okay. And a little bit more light there. I'm planning here some sort of watery parts that the Reflect the figures can be reflected in because the reflection is what makes the picture really. A bit more light up at the top there. Okay, now time to be brave and tackle the figures. They're always a more challenging part of the picture, but it's got to be done. <laughs> so, when I do figures, I like to get the position of the figure sorted out first. So what I'm going to do is mix up a, a sort of neutral grey colour, slightly bluish grey perhaps, but something medium to dark that I can just block in the silhouettes of the figures. Spot of water to make sure it flows. And then the figures. Start with this character here. If you can get the position, if you can get the posture of the figure right, you can add any kind of detail and it will still work. If you don't get the posture right, no, ma no amount of detail is going to improve it. So, don't worry about the lights and darks later, but that's the first figure in place. There's a little bit more there, perhaps. Second figure, I've changed the po positions of these very slightly from the original source photograph. Things like the tilts of these two heads towards one another suggest that they're together, they're perhaps talking. A dropped shoulder on this side, 
higher shoulder on that side, again suggests that they're just leaning together a little. It makes, it tells a story about the couple. You know, it's in the source photo, it's there, but I've exaggerated it. So that's that figure in, then this young lady, although she has got light hair in the uh, source photograph, I'm just going to say dealing with it as a silhouette for the moment. And once I've got the silhouette sorted out, then I can deal with the rest. If that looks sort of right, then I can start to work the details in. The, she looks a bit chunky, but it's okay. I'm going to suggest that this central character is wearing a, a brown top, so I'll just smudge some brown into that. I'm not changing the whole thing, just a suggestion that that's slightly warmer. In the same way, I'm going to suggest that this lady is wearing a, a blue top. And, of course, everyone these days is wearing jeans, so that makes it very easy. Just a hint of blue in there. Again, light-coloured jeans for this lady. I'm not filling it in completely. I want to keep it loose and lively. Give the central character a slightly different coloured pair of jeans, just for interest. He's got darker ones. Uh, we put the hair colour in, a little bit of suggestion of brown for the hair there, just to warm it up a little. Again the same there. Catch a bit of light on the tops of these heads. Okay. And as I say this Young lady, I'm going to give her fair hair. Okay. And what I want to do now is just go to a smaller brush and pick up some highlights. Where these coats are going to get a bit of light on the edges of their outfits. The light dazzles off this sea. It's very uh, fiddly work, this bit, trying to get the edges done. Um, it's the sort of thing that I'll do and then come back to and tidy up much later. Just let that light come over the shoulder a little bit down that side and then of course we need to get the reflections of the figures in which again I'm going to use this quite dark mix of blue and brown and just taking it from the footsteps just I'm just going to make a loose squiggle it doesn't need any more than that if you get too involved in these reflections you think you've got a mirror there instead of just a damp beach. The beach would be uneven, so the mirror reflection wouldn't be perfect. You can pick up a little bit of brown to match his top. Pick up a little bit of blue to match her top. And those figures are pretty much done. I'm just going to put a little bit of light on the footwear here. Gives an idea that they actually are wearing shoes. Tidy up little bits and pieces. That's too light on that side, so I need to darken this edge more. A bit more shadow here. A 
It's just a case of balancing up the lights and darks at this point, deciding where the shadows would come. There's a bit of shadowing behind that arm, I suppose. Right, so we've managed to get a picture here, which I could spend longer working on, but for the purpose of the demonstration, it's finished. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, Terry. A really interactive project there. We've almost reached the end of today's programme, but just before we go, we've just got time to answer a few viewers' questions. First of all, the question has come through, what's the advantage of a natural hairbrush? Whichever medium you're working with, oils, acrylics, watercolours, the natural hairbrushes have been proven to be the best for the actual work. And the main reason this is because they tend to hold the colour better. A synthetic hair does a pretty good job. It's a hair that's replicated to design to look like a natural hair, but where possible, go for the best brushes you can afford. Another question that's come through is, what is the difference between watercolour and acrylics? A very quick answer to this one. Watercolour is designed to be used transparent, and acrylic is designed to be used thick and opaque, almost like an oil painting. Remember, if you have any questions about today's show or any puzzling art queries, you can email us at splashofpaint at saa.co.uk. So that's all for today, folks. Join us next time when we'll be introducing professional artist Louise Bogard and taking a look around St Cuthbert's Mill and how they produce their wonderful watercolour paper. I'll see you again soon. Whether you're a beginner, improver or professional, discover more about the full range of SAA membership benefits available to bring a bigger splash of paint into your life. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details.